we don't like to be remembered for something great. But surprisingly often, incredibly dumb folks leave this world with a parting tale they'd probably prefer to be forgotten. That said, some of these spectacularly dim witted <laughs> accidental exit strategies are irresistibly entertaining to hear about. So without further ado, let's check out some of the most embarrassingly dumb ways people died. Labels? What labels? Whenever blowtorches fall into the hands of the less than brightest members of our species, it's always best to take a few steps back. <laughs> Which, I mean, <laughs> One of those few steps, everybody. If this piece of common sense wasn't already obvious, a man from Topeka, Kansas, certainly made it clear in June 2019. When he stumbled upon what appeared to be an empty metal drum, the inquisitive fellow thought best to cut the thing open with a blowtorch. What he was hoping to use the divided drum for is anyone's guess, as it exploded violently before the well, yeah, the I'd imagine so. <laughs> Apparently, he ignored the bold warnings that the drum contained methanol, a highly volatile compound. People like this, instructions to keep away from naked flame must sound like a challenge. The only reward, of course, is a Darwin Award for removing yourself from the gene pool. Whether he read the labels or not, this guy's overeager blowtorch trigger finger cost him his life. <laughs> Disney's other Dumbo. In Disney's Beauty and the Beast, Gaston is an incredibly arrogant character with an endless supply of misplaced self-confidence. So perhaps the man who played the role of Gaston at Disney World Orlando was still in character when he brought about his own explosive demise in 2015. It would seem so because he clearly placed too much confidence in the strength of his own skull when he launched a firework from atop his head. He'd been drinking and joking around with the idea when the firework accidentally caught a light. Within seconds, the mortar tube exploded in a colorful, fiery explosion. Damn. No amount of beer could take the edge off. Even I'd say not. The Disney world had to find a new Gaston. Well, I'd hopefully the new one was less of a method actor. Stay in your lane. Riding in a bicycle lane can be dangerous enough sometimes, but riding a bicycle on a highway? For most people, this obvious no-no should speak for itself. But one yeah. man in September 2019 was clearly different from most people as he decided to take a late-night bike ride along the 405 freeway in Long Beach, California. He trundled along in the auxiliary lane, which is designed to allow drivers to speed up or slow down, on the 60-mile-per-hour highway in the dark, unaware of the danger. Unsurprisingly, a driver using the auxiliary lane, not expecting to see a cyclist, plowed into the bicycle at full speed on a stop. The cyclist was killed, and the driver was traumatized by an accident that should never have happened. So, unless you're yeah, I can imagine so. Ride their bicycle at 60 miles per hour and over, leave the highways to the motorists. <laughs> Boredom cure. When you're prone to outrageously bad decisions, tempting fate is about twice as dumb as it is for regular people. That didn't stop a Brazilian student, though, whose Facebook bio proudly proclaimed the infinitely wise proverb, Better to die from vodka than from boredom. He put that adage to the test at a drinking contest in 2015 and slammed 25 shots of vodka in less than 60 seconds. Damn. Shortly after sinking the final one, the student said he felt ill and collapsed. On the way to the hospital, he died of alcohol poisoning. Even over an hour, that many shots could have been potentially deadly. But in a minute? Forget Son of a it. bitch. It's fair to say anyone who is cheering this guy on is just as dumb as he was. Past your bedtime, we're often reminded of how important a good night's sleep is, and for good reason. But the impact of staying up too late went far beyond feeling groggy the next morning for one Chinese fellow in 2014. As a huge soccer fan, losing sleep during the World Cup due to the 11-hour time difference between host nation Brazil and his own was no biggie. But the stress, exhaustion, and excitement of watching soccer's greatest players go head-to-head -head non-stop for the 48-hour stretch he stayed awake for took its toll. His extreme exhaustion is thought to have triggered a brain hemorrhage, something researchers suggest sleep deprivation significantly increases the chances of. He died shortly after the last match of the day when Costa Rica defeated Uruguay 3-1. to Whether he was a fan of the losing side and took the loss particularly and fatally hard is unclear. If my parents had told me I could die from staying up too late, I probably would have got more sleep as a teenager. <laughs> Calamity Convoy one night in April 2016, a truly bizarre convoy was seen chugging along a road in Louisiana. One man was driving a sit-down lawnmower, while another sat upon the hood, and a third sat in a wheelchair holding onto the back being pulled along. The trio was reportedly having the time of their lives on their ride along a busy road. That is, until a truck smashed into them from behind. 
As shocking as it seems, it turned out a darkened roadway wasn't the best place for a tag-along DIY joyride. Yes, and not. Miraculously, the only person to die in the incident was the man behind the wheel of the lawnmower, who had seemingly instigated the ridiculous activity. Hopefully, his friends will keep their mowers firmly on the grass from now on. <laughs> Shotgun wedding. It's not my place to criticize another culture's traditions, but a circle of dancing men haphazardly firing shotguns into the air doesn't seem like the smartest way to celebrate a wedding. Unfortunately, that was the method of choice for a group of Indian wedding attendees with a taste for celebratory gunfire in 2019. The first round of gunshots fired dangerously closely over the dancers' heads almost deafened several of them. But the next round fired without any regard to things like, I don't know, aiming? resulted in one shotgun-wielding guest receiving a direct hit to the face. Unaware, the oblivious reveler continued to gleefully fire shots until he was made aware of what he'd done. Needless to say, after he'd finally decided to look around him, the festivities were over. From now on, how about we stick to wedding bells rather than shotgun shells, eh? <laughs> Premature detonation. Every master criminal has to start with the smaller jobs before the big bucks come along. That said, robbing a machine full of condoms for his contents <laughs> and cash is not exactly the use of mark of a criminal. Machine full of condoms, yeah, that's right. Christmas Day, 2015, a group of amateur German thieves decided it was time to make headway in the crime game. They bundled some explosives into a condom dispenser and lit her up. But to their surprise, the explosion blasted chunks of the metal enclosure outwards with enough speed to become deadly projectiles. One of the rubber robbers was struck in the head and died shortly afterwards. The machine wasn't in a much better state either. I hate to state the obvious, but I really think that condom crazy criminal would have been okay if he'd just won protection. <laughs> Cold-blooded companions. For many people, the idea of having a snake in their house is nightmare fuel. For others, a snake is an ideal pet. For a woman living in Indiana in 2019, though, one snake wasn't enough. Her ideal number wasn't two or three. It was 140. As an enthusiast and part-time breeder, you'd think the 36-year-old would have had a solid understanding of the risks of living with reptiles that have the ability to kill you. But whether she let her guard down or just felt comfortable letting the creatures roam free, one fateful evening saw one of her snakes turn on its owner. The next day, the town sheriff was horrified to discover the reptile enthusiast held in a deadly embrace by one of her beloved pets, an eight-foot-long python. It had strangled her to death hours before, but was still wrapped around her neck, proving that when a python wants a hug, there are no half measures. Pythons. Just. Say. No. <laughs> Look, I no hands. Of all the times to show off, doing so while cruising on a motorbike at 85 miles per hour is undoubtedly among the stupidest. And then stop one Russian motorbike blogger who fancied himself somewhat of a daredevil on his Harley Davidson in June 2019, though. He raced along using his feet to steer while filming with his hands, bragging about how his ability to not give a quack made these kinds of stunts possible. Mere moments after sending the outrageously dangerous video on to a friend, the biker lost control and his Harley flipped dozens of times, smashing against the tarmac. The vehicle ended up only slightly less mangled than its rider did. Even the most skilled mechanics and doctors combined couldn't put the two back together. Texting and riding is dumb enough. If you follow in this guy's footsteps, the only thing waiting down the road is a tarmac-covered Darwin Award. Heads up. Bumping your head is one of the most rage-inducing minor pains a person can sustain. But even a direct smack into the hardest low-hanging yeah, shelf doesn't hurt. compare to what one daredevil with a taste for trains and trespassing went through in North Carolina in 2018. In an attempt to satisfy his adrenaline cravings, he climbed onto a train's roof and, as if it was a wild metal stallion, attempted to ride it. It went well initially. He'd been issued warnings previously for similar incidents, so he probably had his head around the balancing act, train top cruising with wire. But his head ended up around something else when the train passed under a low-hanging bridge. Apparently not seeing the bridge in time, he hit it at full speed. Damn. It turns out, hitting solid objects at around 90 miles per hour isn't very good for the human body. Two months later, his skull was found on the side of the railroad approximately 128 miles from where his body was found on the day of the accident. Damn. This led authorities to a grisly conclusion. He'd been quite literally decapitated the moment he hit the roof of the bridge, and his body had continued along its journey before eventually falling off the train. The conclusion is simple. Don't be a train cowboy. It's a real headache. Bad time for a stroll. 
drive through safari parks are a great way for anyone with a love for nature's wildest beasts to experience them up close safely. Well, it's safe just as long as you follow one simple rule. Stay inside your vehicle at all times. Oh yeah, for sure. But on a summer's day in 2016 at Badaling Safari World in Beijing, that simple rule was broken in an act of overwhelming stupidity. After an argument broke out between the passenger and driver of a car driving through the tiger enclosure, the passenger stormed out of the car in frustration. Bad move. Within seconds, a tiger leapt over and snatched her off in its jaws. But while this was indeed a mind-numbingly stupid decision, the response of the other occupants of the car is what proved deadly, despite the fact that park officials were already merely feet away on their rescue mission. One passenger decided she'd be able to overpower the tiger herself. So she got out, ran over, and was immediately killed by one of nature's most efficient murder machines. So, yep. Ironically, the person she'd aimed to save survived, and if she'd only waited a second for the highly trained park officials to take over, she could have too. It shouldn't need to be said, but if you're going to fight a tiger unarmed, you're going to lose. <laughs> Together forever. Of all the ways to go, passing away while doing the dirty is probably one of the best. But for an elderly man who hired an escort in 2016, the aftermath was where the real embarrassment lay. Unfortunately, in the heat of passion, the man suffered a heart attack and died, much to his paid companion's horror. But to make matters worse, the combination of the escort's panic and the man's no longer circulated blood flow the pair became... <laughs> Unable to break free wow. from the horrifically morbid <laughs> embrace, the woman had no choice but to seek medical assistance. Imagine going to the, the hospital like that one, well, holy shit. Wow. Hospital onlookers <laughs> under her blanket. Still very much attached to the man, she'd given a very happy ending. I say so. Just the whole parting bit of till death do us part only applies to married couples.